Hello everyone, this is Ether Dragon, and welcome back to another episode of Fire Emblem Heroes. Don't know if you can tell or if you've, if you've noticed already, but we are trying out the Android 11 native screen recorder for this episode. So we'll be talking a bit about that in the beginning, um, while the replays go about. The first few replays are just, uh, I don't know, I don't know what they were expecting. <laughs> Uh, or pretty standard stuff. So, I think for the most part, after trying out this recorder for a bit, probably only going to use it for short recordings like maybe the Damage Calc series video that hopefully I'll be able to get recorded today. But yeah, just getting yourself hit by a sudden panic here. Not, not great. Because there is no pausing from available with the native screen recording. There's also, the file sizes are pretty large. They're about three times as large as uh, my recordings using the other, the other software that I use. So that, that's definitely not nice. There's also rendering time after re the recording. <laughs> with the other recorder and all the other recorders you'll find out there in the App Store. It's basically instantaneous after you stop recording because they're not recording like internal audio and stuff. Which is the nice thing about the this recorder. It's the only real legal way, I guess you could say, of recording internal audio. Because for all the previous episodes, I've just been using my external microphone built into the phone, of course, because I'm lazy, to record the in-game sounds. So that, and speaking of that, that's the other problem. Because it records internal audio, uh, it, that kind of means... Um, how should we put it? We can't... You can't change the internal audio volume. So if it's too loud or something relative to my voice, I can't fix that. I can only speak louder and... I I'm actually am speaking louder, trying to make some sort of balance out of it, but... Yeah, we're probably gonna stick with the recorder I've been using. It's free, it's straightforward, it gets the job done, it even has some free video editing stuff built in, so it's pretty nice for what it is. But here, Seloth decides to juke the bolt tower, so... Seloth is going to be one source of their problems. I'm not sure why they bait with Elowit here. Kind of suspicious. But I'm guessing they just didn't want Dimitri to get hit by, like, Ignis or something, but it's Dimitri, should be fine. Uh, and here they use Elowit to bait Ignis. And I'm, I'm not sure if they calced it out or something. Probably didn't because I uh, get barely one shot there. But yeah, we're, the the nice thing about this is that in the future, if like I'm on the go or something and can't record commentary or something. At least I'll be able to record the in-game audio and stuff. It's not complete silent recording, a complete silent recording if I decide to not have any commentary on the video. But, so that'll be something. Um, you can also record your like touches on the screen, but I mean you can already see it, <laughs> see stuff like this. So I, I don't think that's necessary. Overall, I think the video quality and stuff is nice. Occasionally, there's some lag issues as well. And then that lag causes the audio, video, and microphone audio to all desync, so it's super awkward. So I don't think I'll be doing long recordings again with this. It'll probably just be the ones where we don't have to cut. So like stuff like Resonant Battles, where the videos can be like, almost an hour, if not over an hour long. I I'm definitely just going to use the software I've been using. I say software, it's just an app, but same difference. 
Um, I, I don't think there's any reason for me to switch to this. But again, it's just nice to have the option. There's another subtle thing that if I want to see how long the recording is, I have to swipe down to my notifications bar. And that's the only way to stop the recording as well. But those are just normal things. Not too big of a deal. They're gonna go in for the attack here. So the double kill. So they don't have to deal with one dancer. But then they bait like this. And the problem with this is Selif lives. So that's not 100% HP. He's able to actually kill Ignis. So uh, good job Selif actually doing something for once, Capital. And uh, at this point, it's basically lost for them. But uh, they, they do take out Sylvia, so Juan Leon can survive Sela's vantage, which is cool, I guess, but he's still dead anyways. And at this point, it's a bit too much, so they just end up surrendering there. Oh yeah, well, like, this is one of the types of episodes where there's cuts, because I gotta cut to when the results come in. So we're gonna we're gonna try this out. That means I have to splice the part of the video, part of this video where I end this part of the recording. That's the other annoying thing, but that's just a small, that's just an inconvenience. It's not a deal, complete deal breaker. But yeah, I don't, I'm not entirely sure. It's better than nothing, of course. I'm sure they'll eventually make improvements to it down the road, but uh, as is, I think it's all right for a starter, for starters, because they removed internal um, audio, or like device, re internal device recording or whatever, for audio, a long while back, so it, it, it's nice to have it back at least. I think it was because of security reasons, they say, you know, totally. But uh, here, Sol's just gonna do a ton of damage to Kana, and uh, she's just not gonna heal a lot overall, so... Rom's actually just gonna walk in and pick up the kill. Heal dead. And after seeing that, they just surrender, because well, I'm pretty sure they're trying to go for a deathless run there. Now we see uh, the classic problem with our team, Bolt Tower. <laughs> Bolt Tower is so good. Like the one match that I lost this season, I actually didn't realize it towards like until like the end of the season, pretty much. That that match that I lost was actually a double match. I thought it was a single match, and because it was a double match, there's actually zero way for me to make tier 27 this week, unfortunately. I still got all 16 matches, but yeah, can't make tier 27 because with a plus 170 lift team, the cutoff, we only have a 320 lift margin to make tier 21, and losing a double match of a plus 170 lift team is 340 lifts, so yeah, no, that, that wasn't happening. Feels bad. That's how it goes, though. But uh, other than that, it's just Bolt Tower has been carrying a lot of matches. Because when people use Bramon on defense, typically, because I put my Bolt Tower force in column 3, a lot of Bramamons are in in range of in columns 2 to 4. And if not, he's like way over on the side where either he can't actually get to attack stuff, or it doesn't matter because I can just player phase one round KO him or something and take damage to get advantage or whatever. But yeah, Bolt Tower here just wrecks this defense. I decided to try out switching Prom and Sylvia's position because normally I have Prom where Sylvia is and vice versa. The problem with this is of course Bolt Tower. All in four Bolt Tower is super popular. Um, it's basically the alternative to Column 3 Bolt Tower because a lot of people put catapults on Column 3 for obvious reasons of space. Um, so we end up with this problem uh, where we, they can just easily get lots of chip damage and take care of units like Selif who 
definitely rely on HP to get some mileage. And here they don't have to worry too much about Bramlon and Hardy Bearing because of whatchamacallit, because of being at full HP, but honestly, if you only had like 28 res, there's there's no other buffs here because the low attack res. And Bramlon only did like what was that, 34 damage-ish? See, eh, you could probably do the same thing with almost any vantage unit and be totally fine. Uh, of course, the difference is Kronia has a basically free B slot for not Vantage, so she's able to run Disarm Trap there, so... But of course, you could also just run another unit of Disarm Trap if you want to do that, but the convenience of running Disarm Trap on Kronia is, of course, it's on... Um, that means you... Another unit doesn't have to use it. And of course, she's probably going to be the one initiating. Because if you're running a double savage blow, you better be player facing. <laughs> Otherwise, you just you just have two dead skills. So, pretty straightforward stuff. Here we see basically another reason why a lot of people don't use Rai. Like, it might look like his stats are great. Well, not right now because he's getting heavily debuffed, but. His attack is just not great. And in Ether Raids, if you can't kill on offense, you're gonna have a lot of problems. But that's just how it goes. Kill power is a beast. And I'm not sure what their plan was. I uh, like they, their their Rai has pulse smoke. So is that at least? He just does not have the kill power. And you're just gonna have Sothis continuously attack him. Of course, she's not doing a lot of damage. And he gets to charge up his special. I don't know why they're using Ether of all things, too. It's just incredibly slow. Of course, they're using George for some more support, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about this. And at this point, I'm pretty sure, I guess, Rai couldn't pick up the kill on anyone else, but no, so I think they go for her. But now all the flood creeps run loose because Vanilla did absolutely nothing this turn. And so Bob is just gonna steamroll. Prom actually doubling for once. <laughs> so this using reposition and classic Selif missing the kill. It's pretty typical for Selif at this point to miss kills. With the HP inflation stuff in Ether Raid, I, I really don't expect them to get one shots or one round KOs a lot. I know I'm running plus speed for the memes, but it, it really rarely comes into play. Plus attacks just straight up better most of the time, unless you actually do invest into a speed. Maybe someday I might use them as an AR offense carry during like, I don't know. Astra season? That's not, that sounds terrible, honestly, though. Because his res is not great. Sure, he'll have Miracle. And I even have, like, Null Speed Disrupt on him if I want to counter, like, healers, but I'm gonna be real with you. He's not gonna last very long if I don't have constant healing in the back. <laughs> not sure if they calculated how the AI was going to move, but it honestly doesn't matter. Because we don't have any wings of mercy support. So, of course, Brave Edelgard isn't going to kill. Prom's unfortunately one pile short out of range of Brave Edelgard. Because he was going to truck quite a bit of damage. He was gonna have, uh, what is that, 74, 85 attack. And then their, basically their weapons would basically cancel each other. Um, and then, so you have low attack defense, but it doesn't matter here that Brave Edelgard barely one round KOs because Nils being alive or dead literally would not change the outcome. So, pretty straightforward there. Brave Edelgard bonus season, pretty strong. Brave Dimitri bonus season, not very strong. <laughs> uh, I don't know, Brave Dimitri. I knew he was going to be underwhelming, but I just chose him because I was like, might as well. He, because 
the farthest I was going to build any of the Brave units was base kit. So, Brave Dimitri, you know, he has built in QR, he's got Noontime and Moon Gratibus. It's good enough. I was considering Brave Dimitri, but I was like, I don't really need a Flying Archer. Probably not. I can always get one later if I want to. Uh, he's definitely going to be solid for a while. Don't know how long. But uh, Wind Parthia is just definitely nice. Just a lot of stuff slapped on it. And the 50% uh, max HP healing when you proc the special to do damage. So, just overall solid. Here, Reinhardt's because of that heal, he's going to be able to barely survive. Sela, again, who doesn't kill? And uh, unfortunately, because they didn't use Nilla correctly, they're going to get memed on by Krom with Luna. The triple infantry pulse has definitely been helpful for Krom in particular, because instead of having one cooldown Luna, he actually has it up immediately. And then the one cooldown Astro Bramamon thing is kind of weird. A lot of times he just gets one shot, so it's almost just better if he had Astro immediately, but uh, I'm not trying to fit four infantry pulses <laughs> to get Astro on him with Hardy Bearing on him. I don't think it's worth To be honest, I should probably- I, I don't- I just don't know who I want to run. I know I want to run two Dark Mythics, that's for sure. Definitely want to run at least one Dancer, but because of Nilla, probably two. So that doesn't leave very many slots open for actual units. Zeloth is just solid for being the top- basically the top of the Infantry Pulse ladder. So then that just leaves one slot left for a unit, and this week we have Krom because it's Water Season. But yeah, I'm not, not entirely sure. I don't expect us to get any more replays though, because uh, with the most recent update, pretty sure they updated Ether Raids, so the matchmaker tries to favors uh, matching up people who have fewer defense matches. It's like trying to evenly distribute matches, so it's not like someone gets zero matches the entire season while someone else gets like 30. Um, not including rematches, of course. But uh, unfortunately here we're demoting to Interval 19. Not terribly surprising considering folks are probably now trying in Resonant Battles because of Trait Fruits. And, um, and even if you have like one Harmonized Hero, you can make Interval 21, I'm pretty sure. Because of how scores work. So, yeah, I'm sure that's what's going on. Here we're staying in tier 21. Gotta build a Hannah for next week if you want to try and stay. I'm pretty certain we can get enough scoring with Hannah to stay. Not actually certain though, completely certain. I know we can score the same as we did this week, 746 to 760, but we'll see if that's actually going to be enough. Uh, because it is going to be fire season, I think wind and fire next week, and a uh, particular bonus unit happens to be a fire legendary, so scores are definitely going to jack up, and of course people with their fire cores are going to get jacked up scores, kind of like how I have a jacked up score because it's water season. But, uh, again, easy top 1k. Arena assaults, not trying for top 50. As of now, it's still around this area. It's always around this area during Water Wind. 5, 3, 50 tends to be the usual cutoff. It's just barely averaging over 760. So, yeah, it's just fishing, spam, and actually winning the matches. Winning the matches can definitely be difficult for you. Some of these guys have pretty solid teams, and some of the maps are just terrible. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. They're, they're not good. But uh, anyways, we gotta let this video render now, so we'll be back when the results drop in. Because I don't, again, I don't expect any more replays. Okay, uh... Not, not sure what to think about the new recording software, but uh... Tier 26 feels bad, man, but that's how it goes. Um, catapult bonus, uh, sure. 
I already had catapult up, so there's nothing to change there. We're just gonna kick this and use our level one offense catapult, which is going to do nothing useful over there. Probably should move for it, but we're not going to. Uh, this defense is just gonna be trolling around like usual. I'm not expecting too much. Probably just most of the same stuff. But uh, some particular units are bonus, so we'll so we'll see what happens. But anyways, resonant battles dropping. This feels bad, man. Arena going, going the to town. We gotta build Hannah for next season. That's why we have our feathers here, so we can afford to actually do such a thing. Of course, Arena Assault top 1k, so we have over 400k feathers now. So I'll start prepping to build Hannah. Because right with my, uh, with, if I use Azama, I max out like 756 and there's no way that's enough. <laughs> so, so we definitely gotta use Hannah. Gotta build her up quite a bit, maybe even to plus 10, we'll see. But until next time, thanks for watching. As always, this is Ether Dragon, and hope to see you all next time. Bye.